Welcome to this video from In 28 Minute. Thanks for all your love which helped us to grow to 25,000 subscribers on YouTube and more than 46,000 students on Udemy. You can find more about us on our website www.in28minutes.com. This video is a part of series of 100 plus videos celebrating my 15 years of experience with programming, design and architecture. In these videos, we talk about how to become a good programmer and a good architect. We also talk about Java related frameworks, concepts, practices and terminologies other than the varied range of tools that we make use of. You can find more details in the description of the video. Welcome back. In this video, let's look at an important question. What are coding standards? Why should you have coding standards? And what are the most important coding standards according to me? Okay, there you go. So let's get started now. So what is really a coding standard? So the way I look at coding standards is something there is these are agreed things in a team that everybody in the team would follow. So some of the uh, organizations have these set up at enterprise level. That's a good thing as well. So you like the thing which coding standards ensure is that when I move from one project to another project or when I'm working on sub, sub, some module and I move to some other module, I would expect something consistent across this. Thing. So coding standards typically, let's say things like formatting, uh, things like how big a method can be, how are your variables named, um, how big a class can grow up to, and how many layers should you have. All those kind of things are really part of your coding standards. So how many parameters can your method have? So all these are really uh, useful to have. I'm not really a big fan of having a lot of coding standards. Uh, like, uh, I mean, you need to really identify what are the important things for you and have standards around them. So for me, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the most important coding standards, I mean, however you format the code, I'm fine. But in a project, you should have one way of formatting code. So it should not be like one class is formatted in some way and another class is formatted in some other way. So as far as a specific team has formatting rules and everybody in the team adheres to that, that's fine. So however you format it, as long as uh, it's consistent across, it's fine. Uh, but things which I would really uh, not uh, compromise on are a complexity of a method. So, you, I mean, complex methods is a very bad signal for me because when a method is complex, I mean, if uh, if the number of ifs, firs, and conditions or conditions in there are there are a lot of that, and there's a big hierarchy of ifs or big hierarchy of loops, then it's a very bad signal for me. So it means that the code there is not really understandable. So for me, the most important coding standard I would really look up to is complexity of a method. So how complex is a method? How complex is a class? So if you have a lot of conditions in a specific class, then it means it's very complex. So that's something which signals that something is not really good down there. The other important coding standard, which is not really checked by the tools is how you name your variables? How you name your methods? How you name your classes? How I mean, naming the variables is more than 50% of readable code. So if you name your variables, methods, and classes properly, then you're making a big step towards having good code quality. The other thing is obviously the size of the methods and classes. So if you have large methods, then it means that pro most probably you're violating the single, a single responsibility principle. And same is the case with large classes. So uh, the other important coding standard is too many uh, parameters. So these are, for me, the most important uh, coding standards. To these, I would really add in the JUnit uh, code coverage. But most important is the fact that code coverage is just a number. My target is not to have 80%, 85%, 90% code coverage. But really, I would want to have tests which cover that functionality. So I should really have good efforts to make sure that that uh, like, like I should have good code coverage with good assets. That's that that should be the real aim. Uh, so these are some of the most important uh, coding standards. Uh, also, the uh, other important thing is the fact that you can actually verify a lot of these coding standards using static analysis. So static code analysis with tools like 
Sonar. Sonar can actually run a lot of uh, like uh, these tools. So Sonar runs Checkstyle, Findbugs, PMD. It also runs the unit test, measures the coverage. And it also runs tools like JDPen, which can kind of do the package analysis and things like that. So Sonar Cube, I mean, actually, it's not Sonar anymore. It's called Sonar Cube now. So static analysis using Sonar Cube is a great way of identifying whether your code is meeting the coding standards or not. But the, always you need to remember that static code analysis has its limitations. So you should always be reviewing code because static analysis cannot identify whether a variable is named properly according to a context or a method is named properly or a class is named properly. So there are really limitations to static analysis, but static analysis is a good tool, uh, but it's not the end all and be all. So those are the important uh, coding standards. Uh, you can ensure coding standards in a project by making sure that it's part of static analysis, which is in continuous integration. And it's also part of the definition of done for your agile team. So there you go. Those are the important rela things related to coding standards. Until the next video. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching this video. We created this video to celebrate my 15 years of experience with design, architecture and programming. We have created two complete Git repositories for you. Java Technology for Beginners and Java Best Practices. Java Best Practices covers my 15 years of experience with design patterns, code quality, design, architecture and modern development practices. We talk about REST services, SOAP web services, microservices, cloud native applications, four principles of simple design, among a varied range of other topics. Tells you how to become a good programmer, designer or an architect. Java Technology for Beginners focuses on the frameworks, concepts, practices and terminologies and tools related to application development. You can find link to the repositories in the description of the video. In 28 minutes has some of the highest rated courses on varied range of topics. You can find more information on our website www.in28minutes.com.